All right, problem two of the practice problems in this Praxis Study Companion book asks you, what's the units digit of 33 to the 408th power? Oh, I got a calculator. Why don't I just figure out what 33 to the 408th power is? We well, can't do that because if you try plugging that into a calculator, you'll get some scientific notation or an overflow error. This is some huge number and you can't calculate it directly. So how do I figure it out? Well, there's really two different options. The first method, which I think most people would use, ends up taking a little bit longer, but it's not too bad. And the idea there is just to look for a pattern. Instead of considering 33 to the 408th power, maybe consider 33 to the first power. Wait, isn't that just 33? Yup. Then consider 33 to the second power, 33 times 33. You don't need to actually figure that out because you get a calculator. 33 squared is equal to 1,089. What about 33 to the third power? Well, you could figure that out with your calculator, or you could recognize that 33 cubed is just 33 squared times 33. So I can just hit times 33 here and get 35,937. I can continue in this fashion by just hitting enter over and over again to continually multiply my previous answer by 33. That tells me that 33 to the fourth power is equal to 1,185,921. Might not seem like we're getting anywhere, but we're actually pretty close. If we figure out 33 to the fifth and 33 to the sixth by hitting enter a couple more times, what you see are these huge numbers that end in three and nine respectively. And if you recall, the question wasn't asking about these values, but instead their unit digit, you might come back and look at the unit digit for each of these different products. Let's see, it was three and then it was nine and then it was seven and then it was one and then it was three again and then it was nine again. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if I figured out 33 to the seventh power and ended up with some absurdly large number that ended in a seven? Let's see if that happens. Well, it does, although you can't see it in your calculator here because my calculator switches to scientific notation, which is kind of unfortunate. But if you were to calculate 33 to the seventh power, you'd end up with some huge number that ends in a seven. How do I know that? Because 33 to the seventh power is 33 to the sixth power times 33. And 33 to the sixth power ends in a nine. And if I take a number that ends in a nine and I multiply it by a number that ends in a three, I'm gonna end up with a number that ends in a seven because nine times three equals 27. Whoa, wait, what just happened there? If you can recognize that the unit digit of a product only comes from the unit digit of the two numbers you're multiplying together to get that product, you can cut this method down significantly. So first, why does that work? Think about what happens when you multiply two digit numbers. So I'm just gonna choose some arbitrary two digit number. I don't know, 94, fine. And I'm gonna multiply that by some other two digit number, um, 63, doesn't matter. The point is, if you think about how you multiply these numbers, the standard multiplication algorithm. First, maybe you take this three times this four and you get a 12. And then you take this three times this nine and get 27, but you don't write the 27 right here. You kind of shift it over one spot by putting a zero in the units place to represent the fact that you're not multiplying nine times three, you're multiplying 90 times three. Then maybe you take this six times four and get 24, but you don't write 24, you write 24 with a little zero over in the ones place to represent that it's not six times four, it's 60 times four. And then finally this nine times this six gives you 54, but you don't write that over here or even over here, you write 54 over here with two zeros here to represent the fact that it's not nine times six, it's 90 times 60. You might do things slightly differently but I bet whatever algorithm you use to do this multiplication longhand allows you to see that the unit digit of this product is gonna be this two plus a bunch of zeros. The unit digit of the product comes from this three and this four and nothing else. If you wanna know the tens digit, then you have gotta consider 90 times three and 60 times four. If you wanna know the hundreds digit, you gotta do even more work. But we don't, we just want the unit digit and the unit digit of a product just comes from the unit of the two numbers that you're multiplying together. And that's really cool because that allows me to figure out the unit digit of 33 times 33 immediately. I don't have to worry about the 30 part of it. I just take three times three and get nine. My unit digit will be nine here. I already knew the unit digit from 33 to the first power was a three. So I guess I should write that down. What about 33 cubed? Well, 33 cubed is 33 squared times 33. And I know the unit digit of 33 squared is a nine, and the unit digit of 33 is a three, and nine times three is 27. If I were doing this algorithm, I'd write 27 here instead of 12, 
but I don't care about the 20 part of it. I only care about the seven part of it. When I figured out my final answer, I'd have the seven from 27 and a whole bunch of zeros. I'd get a seven down here. What I'm saying is the units digit of 33 to the third power must be a seven. Seven times three is 21. 21 ends in a one, so the units digit here is a one. One times three is three, so the units digit here is a three. And I don't need to go any further because if I'm trying to figure out what's on the next line here, I'm thinking about a number whose units digit is a three times another three. But I've already done that calculation up here. I've already seen that that will result in a number whose units digit is a nine. This has to repeat. It's not just that it looks like I have a pattern here. I must have a pattern here because of how the units digit is calculated in this standard multiplication algorithm. Do it again, we'd end up with a seven. Do it again, we'd end up with a one. Do it again, we'd get another three, then another nine, then another seven, then another one, then another three, then another nine, then another seven, then another one, and so on. It's not just that there appears to be a pattern. We have irrefutable proof of what the units digit would be for 33 raised up to any power. I know that 33 to the seventh power must end in a seven, for example. Unfortunately, the question doesn't ask me for 33 to the seventh power. It asks me for 33 to the 408th power. Well, let's see, this pattern repeats every four times. 3971, 3971, 3971. And 408 is divisible by four. So just like when my exponent is divisible by four here and the units digit is a one, when my exponent is an eight, the units digit would end up being a one. And when my exponent is any other number that's divisible by four, 408, for example, the units digit is gonna end up being equal to one.